is lesson 4.7, page 218, piecewise functions. In this lesson, you will learn how to evaluate piecewise functions, how to graph and write a piecewise function, how to graph and write step functions, and how to write absolute value functions. If you want, if you forgot what those are, you can go back to lesson 3.7 and review that. We learned about those in that lesson. Let's talk about evaluating a piecewise function. So before we evaluate, which is get the answer, we have to know what the heck is a piecewise function. A piecewise function is a function defined by two or more equations. Like you look here, we have a function, but it has two different equations applied to it. Each piece of the function applies to a different part of its domain. Okay? And you can see that here in this picture. What they're saying is that f of x will equal x minus 2 if you use values for x that are less than or equal to 0. I tried to highlight this on the graph. So on the gr part of the graph that's left of the y-axis, I would use f of x equals x minus 2. But once I get to the right of the y-axis, then I should use 2x plus 1. That's what a piecewise function is. It tells you on, for certain values of x, use one equation, but for other values of x, use another. So I, you probably haven't used this before, but once you get the hang of it, it's, it's easy to do. It's, it's the same things we've done before. It's just that we have you know, if the domain is one number, you use one function. If it's another, you use another. So I would like you to try on, well, actually, let's do this first. Before we do that, let's look at this example before I have you try. Evaluate the function above when x is 0 and x is 4. Well, if x is 0, I'm supposed to use that. So if I plug a 0 in, 0 minus 2 is negative 2. So f of 0 would be negative 2. But let's say x is 4. Well, then I'm supposed to use that. So if x is 4, 2 times 4 plus 1, that would be 9. So f of 4 would be 9. Now with that said, why don't you try these six questions. Evaluate this function for these six questions. Pause the video and do that. You should have gotten these responses. So if you plug in, I'm going to color code. If you plug in negative 8, you're going to use 3. If you plug in 0, you should be using that and getting 2. If you plug in 5, you should be using this again in pink. If you plug in negative 2, you should be using what we have in pink again because that's part of this domain. If you plug in 3, you should be using the function in pink. And if you plug in 10, you should be using that because that's where x is greater than 5. Okay? Let's talk about graphing a piecewise function. Pretty easy to do. We're going to graph. I'm going to do this on a separate graph paper. We're going to graph this piecewise function for this, these values of x, and then we're going to describe the domain and range. So I wrote the information on graph paper. So now this part is just going back to chapter 3 concepts. If you look carefully here, the slope m is negative 1 and the y-intercept is negative 4. I'm just getting that from this first equation. So Negative 4 is my y-intercept. I put a, basically an open circle there because x can't equal 0. It's got to be less than 0, so open circle. And now my slope's negative 1, so I'm going to go down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1. Now, I've got to be careful. I'm going to get my ruler out and draw a line. But here's the thing. I don't want to just draw a line all the way across my paper like I'm doing here. Okay, that's not correct because here's why. Look at this. I'm going to highlight it. This is only true for x values less than equal 0. So let me highlight. The only places where x is less than or equal to 0 would be 
from here and to the left. So in other words, I should not be graphing this stuff here. Let me erase here. That doesn't belong here. Okay. Get rid of that, put an open circle. So the graph of this is what I did here with an arrow at the end. Let me get rid of that blue shading. Okay, now for the next graph, let me highlight this one in yellow. I want x if x is greater than or equal 0. So let's think for a minute. The y-intercept of this is 0, and the slope of this is 1. So my y-intercepts is 0, that would be here, and my slope is 1. Up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, and so on. Okay, let me get my ruler out. Now, same thing. I don't want to do a line all the way across my paper for this reason. This only applies if x is greater than or equal 0. So I should only be graphing this from here and to the right in this region. Okay? I should only be graphing there. So let's only graph it. Let me erase that out and let me take my line and there it is. Okay, so that's what this graph would look like right here. Now, what's my domain? You notice all my x values are covered. So my domain is all reals. There isn't any x value that I haven't used. <coughs> you can see this thing goes as far as left I want, as far right I want, and I definitely have zero. And now here's my range. Do you notice, let me take a highlighter out, my range. The lowest this graph goes is it's, it's, all the way down to negative 4 and above negative 4, so y would have to be greater than negative 4. I use the open circle here because, remember, if I use 0, I have to use this function, not the other. So that's why I have an open circle. That means that this point does not apply to that, okay? Now that we've gone through that, why don't you try problem 7? Graph this and describe the domain and range. Here is what you should have gotten for the following. Okay, should have had a closed circle for this function here that I'm underlining, closed circle on my graph because it includes zero, but an open circle on the bottom because it does not include zero. If you had questions about this, there's the domain and range. Make sure you ask in class and we can pause the video here and walk through it together in class. Let's talk about how we write a piecewise function. Should be e pretty easy to do. Okay, let's look at this picture. Now, first of all, I can tell from the picture that from here and left, I'm supposed to use this line, and let me take a different color. From zero and to the right, I'm supposed to use this line. Now, you notice they have a closed circle here. So that means 0 would be part of the right side of the graph. So this function here, do you notice the y-intercept is negative 4, b is negative 4, and my slope, down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, the slope is negative 1. So to write that, I would write f of x equals, this would be um, negative x minus 4 if x is less than 0. And now here, you notice my y-intercept is 0 and my slope is positive 1 going up. So this would be f of x equals, well, 1x plus 0, which is x, if x is greater than or equal 0. And that's what they have here matching what I have there. Okay? So to write piecewise functions, all you have to do is find the y-intercept, find the slope, and write the graphs of each of those lines. Why don't you read these two and write piecewise functions for these? Okay, so for the first graph, this would be the piecewise function here. You can see I have part of the graph when x is less than or equal 0. That's over here. That would be this one. And for the right, y-intercept 2, slope 1. That would be for any values x greater than 0. And then... This piecewise function has three parts to it, which is why I have three different statements. 
again, if there's questions about that and, you, and it's not clear, ask in class. We can fast forward to this part of the video and I can walk through it with you together. <coughs> Let's talk about graphing and writing what's called a step function. A step function is a piecewise function defined by a constant value over each part of its domain. So what that means is if x has a certain domain like here, if x is from 0 to 2, then the value would be 2. It's a constant value. If x is from 2 to 4, we have a constant value of 3 and so on. The graph of a step function consists of a series of line segments. It looks like walking up steps. That's why they call it a step function. These are actually pretty easy to write and graph. So for this sample, you rent a karaoke machine for five days. The rental co company charges 50 bucks for the first day, and then they says they charge 25 for each additional day. Write and graph a step function that represents this relationship. Okay, so here's the first thing. They used a little, you don't have to do a table, but they use a little table to organize this information. So if you rent from zero to one days, you're going to pay 50 bucks. If you rent from one to two days, it's 75. If you rent from two to three days, it's 100. If you rent from three to four days and four to five days, I think you get the idea. So here's, the, here's how we would write that in function notation. And you can see that here. Okay? So if we, this says if we rent for half a day, I've got to pay 50 bucks. If I rented for one and a third days, I've got to pay 75 and so on. Okay, now let's graph it as a step function. When x is from 0 to 1, it's 50. So you see from 0 to 1, we went to 50. And if x is from 1 to 2, including 2, you see the equals 2, it would be 75. So open circle at 1, close circle at 2. If x is from 2 to 3, including 3, it'd be 100. That's why it's open circle 2, close circle 3, and so on. You notice they put a title and they labeled the y and x axis. <coughs> why don't you pause the video and try writing and graphing a step function for this situation. Okay, first of all, let's write it out. And this is what it would look like written out. It's 100 bucks for the first day, including one. It's 150 for the second day, from one to two days, including the second day. It's 200 for two to three days, you know, equal three days, and 250 for from three to four days. It's $50 more for each additional day, which you see here. Now I just have to graph it. So if I go to my graph paper, I want to put a title. I want to label the x and y axis. I made my y axis by 50s, and I put in my steps. You can see if I'm reading this, if I rent for two to three days, according to this graph, I would have to pay $200, which is matching what's over here, two to three days, is $200. Okay? Finally, let's talk about writing absolute value functions as piecewise functions. Now, absolute value functions, again, it's a review of Lesson 3.7. These were the V-shaped graphs. Okay? So an absolute value can be written in two pieces. One half of the V is one piece. The other half of the V is the other piece. So let me just highlight that here. Here's one half of my V in one piece, and here's the other half of the V in the other piece. Now, this next part, I think the book makes this way more complicated than necessary. I would just say instead of th this, remember, the only thing I am going to say about this is remember, in an in a absolute value function, we ought to be able to look at the vertex and find it. That is important. But this other stuff here, I think this is, this is making it harder than it needs to be. If you remember point slope form, you can get everything you need from point slope form and not even have to do all of this stuff they're telling you. Okay, for example, look at this example problem. Here's my absolute value function. You can see an upside down V. 
Here's the vertex. It's the point 5, 8. Okay? Here's one side of my graph. So let's write that function out. First of all, my y-intercept is 0 and my slope. I'm going up 8 and over 5. 8 over 5 is my slope and 8 over 5 is 1.6. So one piece of my graph would be 1.6x plus nothing when x is less than 5. You can see that half of the graph. Let me just shade it here. Here's all the values less than 5 over here. That would be the equation. Now, for the other half of my graph, okay, I know a point. I got the point 5, 8. I also know the slope. If, if this is up 8 over 5, then this side of the graph would have to be down 8 over 5. Okay, so my slope of this graph would be, well, negative 8 over 5, which equals negative 1.6. I know the slope. I should be able to use point slope. So let's just go ahead and, and do point slope real quick. Okay, my point, plug in 8 and plug in 5, and there's my slope. Distribute, add 8 to each side, and there's what y would equal when x is greater than or equal 5. So f of x would be negative 1.6x plus 16 when x is greater than or equal 5. And you notice this is exactly what the book put without having to remember all these formulas and stuff. Okay? I think I'm going to pause the video here. If you have questions, make sure you ask in class.